Hey folks, this is Joel with uh, Applied Performance Shooting. So what we're going to talk about today is grip. And more importantly, we are going to talk about how to develop and find your grip. So that you own your grip just like a golfer owns his swing. There's no golfer on planet Earth that's any good that swings the club differently every single time. And there's no pistol shooter on planet Earth that shoots well gripping the pistol differently. We have to grip the pistol the same way every single time. So what this video is going to be talking about is how do we experiment with all the 867,432 different variations of the thumbs forward grip. Someone, uh, or well, the reason I'm doing this video is because there's a hundred YouTube videos about grip and they all fall into one of two categories. First one, someone just generally telling you, okay, you put your hand here, you get high up here on the, on the gun hand, then you leave this space open, then you come in, thumbs forward, and you fill up that gap, and that's where you put your hands. And that's somewhat, kind of just a general thing showing you what it looks like. That's somewhat helpful. And then the second style is someone showing you their grip and how they do it, right? And that's also really helpful. But the only problem is, is you have to consume then, like hundreds of videos, so that you can see how this guy does it, how that guy does it, how this girl does it, and that girl, and, and then compile all that, that, that mountain of data and then try to figure out and experiment and play with it until you find yours. So what this video is going to try to do is shortcut all that and go through the what I've broken down through all my extensive research and trying to teach people. Um, what I've broken down is four styles, and these styles relate to the pressures and the rotational forces, the isometric pressures, however we in, input more pressure and leverage and friction on the gun. So they're not necessarily the exact way to do it and put your thumb here and this, the and pinky, and it's just talking about pressures, okay, and how to get them and how to experiment for yourself so that you can find your golf swing, your special snowflake of a grip. And the way I explain this to people in classes is, if I had a clay pistol, right, and me and Billy Bob over here, we can, we grip the pistol like identically. So visually, when you look at us from side, front, back, whatever, our, our hands are in the same places, our thumbs in the same places, this, that, and whatever. If we were both to grab a, a clay gun and put our grip on it and then examine the clay gun, there'd be dents in different places. Well, how is that possible? Both, both of us grip the pistol the same way. Everyone's grip is an absolute fingerprint, and we have to find ours. So, uh, let's talk about those four styles. And first of all, let's go over the, uh, the thumbs forward grip, and then we'll talk about a few core principles first, then we'll get into that. Uh, the thumbs forward grip, yes, you can become a proficient shooter using a crush grip uh, style like this, or a weaver stance or something like that, and I don't get a whole lot into that. I use a fighting stance. The same way I want to punch someone in the face is the same way I would want to deliver uh, lead therapy to them. So, uh, yes, you can become proficient, but there is a mountain of, of evidence showing that if we took the top 500 best pistol shooters in the world and looked at their grip, they're going to be using some variation of that thumbs forward grip, right? And, and that's the, the, the evidence that all I, all the evidence I need to say that each individual grip is a fingerprint because every one of the top shooters in the world does it differently, right? Some guys do, do wacky stuff. Sometimes it looks like a grip like, man, how does that work? Yeah, it does. So uh, there is def different ways to do it, but some variation of the thumbs forward is going to be a linear progression for you. Other techniques are plateau techniques. Eventually you're going to plateau with them and need to drop that and start off with something new. So a couple key principles that have to be abided by. The strong hand has to be high up underneath the beaver tail wedged up in there as high as we can get no matter what. So we want to be high on the gun. We want, to, we want to put a lot of leverage into it. We want to cover it with as much hand as possible and then we want to create as much friction as possible. So I, I tell people, I want this gun to be sitting in a Velcro pouch, okay? If the gun was made of Velcro and it was in a Velcro pouch, that's how I want it to be in my hands. The gun cannot move in our hands. So if you see somebody bang, 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 they milk her up, 
bang, bang, bang. That's because the gun's moving in their hands. We should be able to build that grip and it be on like a light switch. It's on or off. Grip, on, off, on, off, on or off, absolutely. We want to think about this building of the grip as a recipe, as a process. You can't repeat an outcome, but you can damn sure repeat a recipe. You can't get grandma's chili by just taking all the ingredients and tossing them in there. You have to follow the recipe. You have to do the steps. You have to hit the index points. You have to do things the way you do them, but you do them your way. So we got to find that. Now let's get into the meat and taters here. What I've come up with in all my research and then trying to take beginner shooters and make them badasses in one day, which I do, we can make a beginner really, really good by, by adhering to this stuff. <clears throat> There's four different styles that I've broken it down into. And these styles pertain directly to the pressures and inputs that we put into the gun, whatever they're like. So the four styles, let's get right into her. First one that I'd like to see people play with, and this really helps uh, beginners, it helps people with smaller hands or weaker hands lacking a little bit of grip strength if you don't have big mammoth hands this one's a, a, a money shot for you to uh, to start off with and that's the Bob Vogel style okay now again we are not talking about the way that Bob Vogel grips the pistol we are simply just talking about the pressures how he inputs pressure into the gun and the main talking point here is inward rotational pressure like this Okay, so I'm just flaring my elbows to exaggerate it. And what this is, is if you took a wishbone and grabbed the two bottom spurs of the wishbone and then broke it like that. Okay, inward rotational pressure. So if I was to present my grip and then let go, the gun will fly out like that. All right, that's the pressure to play with. The second style that we need to play with is the Seeklander style, Mike Seeklander. Again, not, not Michael C. Klander's grip, just this style of pressure. And what his is, is an outward rotational pressure and utilizing the back corner of the back strap of the gun. And with any of these grips, this back corner of the back strap of the gun is going to be huge for you to utilize. And then there's also one thing I'll talk about real quick. A lot of people were taught to line the gun up with that bone in their arm, okay? problem is with that is that doesn't work because as soon as we put the gun in front of our face there's wrist flexion so it doesn't work unless you're weaver style which then maybe it does okay but for modern thumbs forward grip that has nothing to do with anything so what I want people to do is try to wrap around there just a little bit further one thing it gives you better trigger finger geometry it allows you to create that right angle or go a little further or you know it allows you to play with that and experiment with that so go around that gun just a little bit further and what this does is it opens this corner of the back strap for you to impart pressure. Now, back to the Seeklander style. The Seeklander style is outward rotational pressure. So if I was to present the gun and then let go of it, it'll fly open like this. And how I've heard him explain it, which is slick, is the right hand is tightening a jar and the left hand is loosening a jar. So rotational pressure driving this hand into the uh, into the uh, back corner of the back strap now the third style is a isometric push pull style that has no side to side no lateral pressures put into it whatsoever it's just isometric push pull now what I mean by isometric is you're imparting pressure and then just holding it so it's not an active push it's not push pull like weaver style although it has some small small similarities to that it's isometric pressure isometric means like uh, an isometric exercise would be like a plank where you're putting pressure and then you're just holding it so how we do that is again by utilizing that back corner of the back strap it's gonna be huge on this one and then trying to take our, our our support hand fingers and pulling back creating a stable platform with the uh, strong hand pulling back against those fingers with your entire arm really isometrically though pulling back and stopping and then driving that palm into that corner of that back strap okay <clears throat> pretty money style there's pros and cons to all these. 
Uh, but that one, I believe it requires people to have just a little bit more grip strength and it's not as good as the first two for smaller handed folks. Now we'll get into what, what most people's grip falls into as this fourth category, and that's the hybrid style. And if you can guess, that's just gonna be a hybrid of styles one, two, and three. So we're using a little bit of the Vogel style, we're using a little bit of that C-Clander style, and we're using a little bit of that isometric push-pull style. This is where my grip falls into, but I'll add one more caveat to this hybrid style, and that is the use of the trigger guard to use for leverage, okay? If I have a, a, a leverage point that is attached to the gun that I can get a mechanical advantage from, man, I really wanna use it. So no matter what gun I shoot, this M&P doesn't have a squared off trigger guard, so I'm gonna come up a little higher on it. But no matter which one of these grips I'm using, Vogel style, I'm gripping with that with that forefinger on the uh, the trigger guard. Uh, push pull isometric, I'm gonna put my finger up on the trigger guard a little higher so that I can use it to drive that hand in. Okay, uh, C Clander style, I'm pulling on that trigger guard. So the trigger guard is part of the hybrid style that I enact for people and talk about for people. And this one, especially using that trigger guard, is huge for people with lacking of grip strength, uh, small hands, maybe arthritis, things like that. Because once we hook that finger around the trigger guard in whichever pressure mode we wanna use, uh, we, can, we can use our arms then as levers. And, okay, we're pushing our elbows in a little bit to create that C Clander style. We're creating a little bit up with the, with the Bob Vogel style and then just whatever you want to use, whatever feels comfortable for the push-pull style. Now there's pros and cons to each one. A lot of people say that, that with the Vogel style or the Seaclander style, you'll get side-to-side -side dispersion. But if we adhere to those core principles at the beginning and talk about, hey, when I put my grip on, it's on. That means same pressures, same things, it's on. So uh, I don't buy into that because it, no matter what, even with the isometric push-pull, even though there's no lateral pressure, if we let off with one hand or the other, the gun's going all over. So no matter what, with all these grips, we have to develop it to where we put it on, and it's on, and there's, there's no lack of pressures, there's no... So what I like is the trigger guard allows me not to have to squeeze anything. I mean, I'm firm, and I'm putting pressure, and I'm squeezing a little bit with the pinky and the... In the uh, you know, just got a good solid master grip with the uh, the gun hand, but but I'm not squeezing with this left hand. I'm I'm hooking and then torquing. So if I put percentages to it myself, I'd probably say I'm probably seventy percent C Clander style, the outward rotation, uh, fifteen percent Vogel style because I do put a little bit of torque inward, um, and then fifteen percent isometric push pull style. And if you're wanting to get more into the isometric push pull side, uh, Hummel Marksman probably got the best, best video on YouTube explaining all that, solid. Now, how do, we, how do we experiment with this? How do we pressure and play with this? On either the Vogel or the uh, C-Clander style, the strong hand pinky is going to do a lot. So when I'm doing Vogel style, my strong hand pinky really has to hook. And, and be able to, okay, it's the furthest away from the lever, all right, the, the, the slide of the gun being the lever in this case, uh, or the fulcrum in this case, I'm all the way down here, I'm gonna hook with that pinky and draw up, okay? Um, I do a lot with, with, my, uh, with my pointer finger on the trigger guard to assist in that. With the, uh, with the C-Clander style, same thing, that pinky, I need that pressure, and our hands are actually stronger the bottom half of our hands actually technically stronger. Uh, with, with the isometric push-pull style, uh, some, some things to think about are, are just simply trying to drive into that corner of the backstrap. With, with that and the C-Clander style, you really got to think about driving that, that palm into that back corner of the backstrap again, rotate your hand around a little further, money, money, money. And like I said, there is small pros and cons to all these, but it doesn't matter. You gotta you gotta master that grip and rock and roll with it. All right. Okay.